After months of delay, Israel's premier finally secured his first trip to a Gulf state. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was formally invited on Monday to visit the United Arab Emirates in November to attend the COP28 climate summit in Dubai, along with dozens of other foreign leaders. The UAE's ambassador to Israel, Mohammed al Khaja, also delivered a separate invitation to President Isaac Herzog. This is not the visit that uh, Netanyahu wanted. This is not an official visit by the Israeli prime minister to the, to the UIA. He has been invited, which is good, which is nice, has been invited to participate in a very important international conference with other 100 heads of state. Meanwhile, Netanyahu and his foreign minister Eli Cohen reportedly spoke this week with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman as part of, quote, very complex negotiations to launch direct flights between Israel and Jeddah next month for the Hajj annual Muslim pilgrimage. But Israel is aiming for much more than just flights to the kingdom. I estimate that there is a good chance that we will be able to promote a peace agreement with Saudi Arabia in the next six months to a year. This is our goal. According to Israel's Channel 12, Jerusalem is under pressure from the Biden administration to agree to Riyadh's demands for significant concessions to the Palestinians in return for the flights. These would include handing certain powers in the West Bank from the Israeli military to the Palestinian Authority forces and giving the PA security-related authority at the Temple Mount and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem's Old City. The Palestinian issue was and still is the main concern for Arabs and Muslims and is a top priority of the Kingdom's foreign policy. The Kingdom did not hesitate or delay in supporting the brotherly Palestinian people in their efforts to recover their lands, restore their legitimate rights and establish an independent and sovereign Palestinian state on the Palestinian lands. While these far-reaching steps are highly unlikely to be approved by Israel's hard-right government, both Jerusalem and Riyadh continue to search for ways to reach normalization, which could be just a matter of time.